Okay, today we're going to learn about receive clarifier, sometimes called RIT, sometimes called RIT. We're going to talk a little bit about XIT or transmit clarifier. We'll talk a little bit about CW pitch and CW tone settings on your radio. And we are also going to talk about something that you might see on the DX cluster when they say up one, sometimes up two for a CW station. Sometimes you'll hear, hear a station, uh, a DX station, or maybe even a US station when they're calling CQ, they are calling CQ up, UP. So we're going to talk about what that means also. So let's get right into it. So sometimes when you're listening to a CW station, like I'm listening to W1AW here, for example, 20 meters, they're on 14047.5. And I might like to listen to CW at a little bit of a different pitch. So what I can do is I can turn on my receive clarifier here. Sometimes it might be called RIT. And there will be another knob that will allow you to make a adjustment. And it just so happens that on this 101 MP, that when this clarifier light is lit, that adjustment is this outer ring here. So if I start adjusting this ring, let's see what happens. A couple of things will start happening. So first of all, it looks like I went 70 hertz above that signal. You can see that the green line is 70 hertz above the signal. And it sounds a little different. So I can adjust this to my liking. And all this does is changes the CW tone at, at which I'm receiving. So when we transmit, you'll see that the red line is still showing that we're going to transmit on that person's frequency. Of course, we're not going to do that right now because this is W1AW, the kind of line broadcast, the bulletin. So we're not going to transmit. But if we were pretending this was a CW signal, a CW station, of course, when we transmit, we want to transmit on the same frequency that they are transmitting on so that they will hear us. But we might want to listen to them a little bit higher or a little bit lower, for example. Maybe you like to listen to CW at a very high pitch. So you can use RIT or the receive clarifier to really customize how you want to listen to a CW station in the best way possible. You might have, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about the CW tone in a minute, but you might want to adjust what you normally listen to with, with CW. For example, you might like to listen to it at this tone, at this exact pitch. But the band conditions might dictate that it probably might sound a little better if I listened to, oops, I actually moved the actual frequency. It might sound a little bit better if I adjusted the pitch a little bit higher so you can you can kind of essentially adjust what you're really doing is you're changing the receive frequency which in effect adjusts the pitch of the CW tone only on receive so you can adjust it as, however you want and then when you do transmit you're going to actually transmit on the frequency you don't have to worry about um, you know you can like swing this way off and I could barely even hear them now actually I can't hear them at all So you can adjust this however you want and the transmit will still be there. So I'm going to turn the receive clarifier off and you're going to see we're back. Everything's back to normal. The green and the red are lined up. Actually, it looks like I need to go over just a teeny bit. There we go. So the ARRL is publishing uh, or um, they're sending on 14047.5 exactly, and that's how, how we have that. So that's what 
writ is or receive clarifier or receive incremental tuning. A great example of where you would use writ or receive clarifier is when you're calling CQ. When you're calling CQ, you're on a frequency like, for example, 14047.4. And I just found that frequency. I like the number or whatever. And I'm calling CQ, right? So all of a sudden, when I'm calling CQ, somebody answers me. And I don't know, I would say nine times out of 10, they're going to answer you on that frequency. And it's going to sound beautiful. But um, in reality, nine times out of 10, that's, that's kind of generous. Probably about six times out of 10, the station that's calling you after is it, they're answering your CQ is not going to be right on that frequency. They're going to be a little bit off. For example, they might be up here. Of course, this is this is the AWRL uh, W1AW broadcast right now, but I'm using them as an example of why when I'm calling C, CQ, and if somebody answers me up here, what I can do is I can I can have my receive clarifier on, and I can quickly bring up. 90 hertz and it sounds great and of course i'm going to then be transmitting on the frequency that that i was oops there it is that i was just on so i'm going to be transmitting on my favorite frequency whoops i don't want to do the big knob so my favorite favorite frequency is 14047.4 and all of a sudden i hear somebody i can push this receive clarifier and i can hear them and I, I can hear them pretty good on 14047.5. So I've got them centered up here, but I'm still transmitting on my original CQ frequency. You don't want to change your transmit frequency when you're calling CQ because people are going to be like, hey, where'd that, where'd that person go? Why'd they change frequencies? It's, it's kind of weird. So that's a good reason why you would want to use RIT. Calling CQ and listening and, and tuning up people that are calling you and that are responding to your CQ is a good reason to use RIT. So there's going to be another case where you might want to do something a little bit similar, uh, but on the transmit side, let's say you are listening to a station like W1AW and they are calling. If you look at the DX cluster, you might see something that says, the station is calling up one. Well, what exactly does that mean? Well, the station is calling CQ on this particular frequency. Let's say, for example, it's 14047.5, and they are going to listen up one. What does that exactly mean? Well, that means that they are going to listen, and I'm going to put on the transmit clarifier, and I'm going to bring this up one kilohertz, for example, like right about there. So what happens is the DX station is calling CQ on this frequency, which we can hear them, and they are listening up one kilohertz. So that would be 14048.5. So they're listening up here. Why are they doing that? Well, because if everyone calls this DX station on the same frequency, it, it could be a total mob scene. And um, a lot of stations might not be able to hear the, the DX station uh, respond to stations or start calling CQ again because other stations are basically stepping all over the DX station when they're trying to call CQ or call, a, um, call another ham station that's trying to call them. So that's why they will operate in what is called split mode. So they will be listening up one so that all of the chaos here can happen and we can listen exclusively to the DX station. I hope I explained that, that, that pretty good. But that's what the, um, the XIT or transmit clarifier is. You can also... You can also do this in a couple of different ways. Uh, another way is if you have two VFOs, so you, for example, we have 14047.5, we can change our sub-VFO to 
14048.5 and have us transmit on the sub VFO. So now we're listening on VFO A, we're listening, and we're listening to 14047.5 and we're transmitting on 14048.5. So we got the TX there. So that's another way you can do it. Um, you can also, if you want to hear, and, and it's kind of easy with the SDR readout because you can see the DX station calling CQ here, and then you can hear, or you can actually see on the SDR or the screen, all of the other the, the stations that are trying to call the DX station. So you can kind of line your transmit frequency up with other um, other stations that are trying to call the DX station, for example. I wish I had a good example of that that's going on right now. There was an Expedition K7K that was doing this. That would have been a good example, but I have not heard them on lately. So I will try to find a good example, and I might edit this video later to be able to insert that as an example. But that's what uh, RIT and XIT do, or Receive Clarifier and Transmit Clarifier do. And that is what the up one, or even when they're calling CQ, they'll call CQ uh, DX station UP. And what that means is they are listening up. And it's usually about one kilohertz. Sometimes they'll, they'll say we're listening up to, like if there's a huge pileup, the, um, the DX station could be listening as high as you know 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8. It could be all over the place. And depending on the operator on the DX station, they could kind of have a tendency to maybe listen up high as opposed to listening kind of a little bit lower. So that's what split operation is. We've got receive clarifier, TX clarifier, uh, RIT and XIT. And that's how you would use them. So you're probably wondering how to do this on the flex. And if you notice here, we've got the W1AW station tuned in pretty solidly here. We've got 14047.5. And actually it looks like it's, as far as the, looks like it's 14047.52 on my flex for some reason. And if we wanted to do a RIT or an XIT operation, we would come up to here. And if we wanted to, if this was a DX station calling CQ up one, we would then be able to crank this up to, and then hit the XIT button. So you can see that the flex puts a little red bar where you would be then transmitting. So if there were multiple stations coming back to this DX station, you would see them calling the DX station over here if they were operating split or up one, for example. Then you can always, you can zero it out so it comes back, get rid of XIT. You can do the same thing with RIT. Let's get this audio up so you can hear it. like uh, the AWRL is getting a little little weak. So you can see that I'm, I'm down about 60 hertz and you can see there is a, a red dotted line to show you where I'm going to be transmitting. So I'm going to be transmitting on their frequency and then you can zero out zero it out and you can um, hear what it sounds like. So another thing I wanted to talk about, and we'll go back to the FTDX 101 MP in a moment, but we are right on this ARRL signal, and it's got a certain pitch to it. Maybe we like to listen to CW at a little bit of a different pitch. Well, if instead of like moving the writ around all the time, which is kind of a pain in the neck, we can actually come over here and change the pitch. 
I just so happen to like pitch at 750. It's a little bit higher than usual. And it, it adjusts everything automatically for you. So you are still right on, the fre on their frequency. I'm not messing with RIT. And it changes it for everybody and everything. Let's see what this person's doing over here. Seems like there was a strong signal over here, but they're gone. So that person's saying 73. But let's look at how to change that on the FTDX 101. So you can change the, the pitch Some people like 700 hertz. That's a little bit too low for me. I'm more of a 750 hertz person. So let's check out the FTDX 101 on pitch. And you want to make sure that your pitch is accurate also. Or at least accurate to what, what you'd like to uh, hear CW sound like. So we're back over to the FTDX. DX 101 MP and I wanted to show you the the way you can adjust the pitch here so if you are in CW mode which we are I want to make sure that um, we can go over to the outside ring here where it says uh, processor and pitch so if we're in sideband mode this is actually controlling the um, sideband processor and since we're in CW mode it actually adjusts the pitch so when we rotate this dial you can see it was on 750, which is where I like it. But you can bring it all the way down to 700. I think it goes down to 6. Oh, it goes pretty low. I thought it only went down to 6 something. But um, I think anything lower than 600 hertz is just going to sound terrible. I would recommend somewhere around the 710, 720, 730. I like 750. Anything higher than 750 is probably going to be too high. That's how you change the the pitch of the CW tone that you're receiving on the FTDX 101 MP.